In this video, I'm going to attempt to talk through the work for the first five questions on the Unit 8 review packet. You can see at the top of the screen that the expectation is that these problems can be done without a calculator. However, we're going to use the calculator to verify results for at least uh, one or two of these. So let's start with number one. Our job for all of these is to sketch the region bounded by the graphs of the equations and determine the area of the region. Then use the integration capabilities of a graphing calculator to verify the results. In number one, we can see the function is y equals 1 over x squared. Our second function is y equals 0, which happens to be the x-axis, and x equals 1 and x equals 5. So I'm going to jump to the solution document. The first thing you would be expected to be able to do is draw yourself a sketch of this region. So I highlighted my sketch, and what I did was draw a coordinate plane, drew the vertical lines x equals 1 and x equals 5, drew the y equals 0 through the x-axis, and then I picked some x values between 1 and 5 to determine where the function 1 over x squared was. That allowed me to see that my uh, region is simply the integral of 1 over x squared with respect to x from 1 to 5. So I set up my integral. This is actually a question we could have done in the previous unit because it's not even requiring us to do the area between two curves necessarily. However, we can always consider the x-axis as the line y equals 0. We could subtract 0 as our bottom function, but there's no need to do that. So, to integrate this, I first rewrote 1 over x squared as x to the negative 2 power, and then I was able to integrate. So, the integral of x to the negative 2 power, we go up to x to the negative 1 times the reciprocal of negative 1, which is negative 1. I put the negative 1 in front of my result, so I didn't have to worry about doing anything with it when I evaluated. And when I evaluate from my upper limit first, then minus my lower limit, I also rewrote x to the negative 1 as 1 over x. So my result is negative, uh, negative times the quantity of 1 fifth minus 1 over 1. 1 fifth minus 1 over 1 got a common denominator of 5, so it became 1 fifth minus 5 fifths. So I had the opposite of negative 4 fifths, which of course is just 4 fifths. In your calculator, you could easily do this one by using the finite integral of y1, comma x, comma 1, comma 5. The result would be 8 tenths, and then the convert to fraction button would get us the answer of 4 fifths. This, since it is not the area between two curves, could also be done uh, using second calc or second trace and using the integral option and it would shade the region for us as well. Simplest of the five for sure. Number two asks us to do the same thing. The function is y equals 1 over x squared again, but instead of y equals 0 we have y equals 4, and then the only other boundary it gives us is x equals 5. So we don't have both of our x values, which means we're going to have to determine where 1 over x squared intersects with 4. If I jump to the work. I would not have been able to get this full sketch until I found the intersection of my two functions. So my y1 function is 1 over x squared. My y2 function is 4. I would solve this equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by x squared to get 1 equals 4x squared. This is a quadratic equation that can be solved a number of ways, but I cho chose excuse me, to use the square rooting method. So I divided by 4, and then I square rooted both sides of the equation to get x equals plus or minus. Don't forget that. Anytime you square root when you're solving, you need a plus or minus in your answer one-half. You might ask yourself where the one-half came from, but remember when you square root a fraction, you square root the top and bottom separately, so the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2. This told me that my functions intersect at one-half and negative one-half. I only care about positive one-half, as you can see from the graph here, because I'm looking at the region that goes up to x equals 5. 
So the x values that I'm concerning myself with are x equals 1 half and x equals 5. And when I draw my sketch, y equals 4 is a uh, horizontal line. And 1 over x squared, I can plug some x values into that function to find that it is below y equals 4. So when I find the area between these two curves, I end up doing the integral from 1 half to 5 of my second function minus my first function, where my second function is y equals 4, and my second function is y equals 1 minus x squared. So the integral itself looks like this. I then rewrote 1 over x squared to be x to the negative 2 power, and after that I was able to integrate. So the integral of 4 is 4x, the integral of negative x to the negative 2 is x to the negative first times the reciprocal of negative 1, which makes it a plus x to the negative 1 power. I had to evaluate uh, my upper limit minus my lower limit, so I have all the work for that in this case. And you'll notice that when I substituted the 5 and the 1 half into the x to the negative 1, I wrote it as 1 over 5 and 1 over 1 half, so that I was able to simplify those. And then after getting a common denominator, 16 plus 1 fifth becomes 81 fifths. On your calculator, it would be very easy to do this. You would take the finite integral of y2 minus y1, where y2 would have to be y equals 4, and y1 would have to be y equals 1 over x squared, comma, with respect to x, comma, from 0.5, and I chose to do 0.5 so I didn't have to put my fraction in parentheses, comma, 5, you would get 16.2, and then the convert to fraction button would give you 81 fifths. My third example is y equals x and y equals x cubed. Once again, I have no x value, so I have to set these functions equal to each other so I can find where they intersect. Kind of a unique example in many ways because when I set my functions equal to each other, I have x equals x cubed. This is not a quadratic function, it's a cubic function. I can still set my equation equal to zero, factor out the greatest common factor of x, the result is a difference of squares as my other factor, which factors into x plus 1, x minus 1. So I have not two x values, but three x values. So when I sketch my function, I sketched it from negative 1 to 1, and what I ended up finding out was that x cubed is above x from negative 1 to 0, and then x is above x cubed from 0 to 1, which means I had to set up not one, but two integrals. One integral from negative 1 to 0, where x cubed minus x is the function I integrate, and then another integral from 0 to 1, where x minus x cubed is the function that I'm integrating. So you always have to take the top curve minus the bottom curve, or top function minus the bottom function might be a more appropriate way to say that. So then I substitute my functions in, integrate, and then evaluate and I wrote out all the work even though a number of these end up having zeros and with a little bit of fraction work I was able to get down to 1 minus 1 half which is obviously just 1 half. If you were to do this in your calculator you would have to type in two finite integrals. You could do this one of two ways. You could do each integral separately and then add the results, or you could type in the finite integral of y2 minus y1, comma, with respect to x, comma, from negative 1 to 0, and then close it up, and then literally put plus and put another finite integral on the same line. So you wouldn't have to necessarily do each one separately as long as you were confident that you were typing in your functions correctly you would get 0.5, which you could hit convert to fraction, although that would be kind of silly, as we know that 0.5 is 1 half.
Our fourth example has the functions y equals e to the x power, y equals e to the, or e squared, excuse me, and x equals 0. Only gives us one x value, so we know that we're going to have to set these two functions equal to find out where else they intersect. Jump to the solutions. Pretty easy to find the intersection in this case. e to the x set equal to e squared. Clearly, x has to equal 2. So x equals 0 is given to us. x equals 2 is our other intersection, so we're concerned about the region between x equals 0 and x equals 2. The sketch of this is relatively simple. You would have to know that e is approximately 2.718. So when you square that, it's going to be somewhere, you know, under 9. It doesn't have to be anything perfect, but you can see the approximation if you had your calculator is 7.389. And then to draw the y equals e to the x function, you could simply plug in 0, 1, and 2 and use some approximating skills to find the uh, sketch of the curve there. Your curve sketching does not have to be perfect as long as you can determine which function is the upper function and which is the lower function. And clearly, y equals x squared is above y equals e to the x power from 0 to 2. So to find the area between the two curves or functions, it would be the integral from 0 to 2 of y2, which would be e squared, minus e to the x which is our y1 function. Then you would have to go in here and remember that e squared is a number, it's a constant. So when you integrate it, it is simply e squared times x. The integral of e to the x is e to the x and the minus stays with it because it's like having a negative one out front. We would then evaluate this upper limit minus lower limit and anytime you have e functions, you have to be real careful because e raised to the 0 power is not 0, it's actually 1. So putting the 2's in minus putting the 0's in gives us the result 2e squared minus e squared minus 0 plus 1. 2e squared minus 1e squared is simply e squared plus 1, which cannot be simplified any further. In your graphing calculator, you could do the finite integral of e squared minus e to the x power with respect to x from 0 to 2, and you would get the approximation. So it would be real difficult to get the exact answer on the calculator, but if you were able to do an approximation, that would be the answer you'd be looking for. Our final example asks us to find the area between y equals sine of x y equals cosine of x from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4, which we actually did in a previous example from the unit 8 notes. So I'm going to fly through this one pretty quickly. But as you can see on the solution, no need to find an intersection. And your graph would not even have to be that detailed. You would just have to know that sine of x is above cosine of x from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4 so that you could set up your integral. The integral of sine of x is negative cosine of x. The integral of cosine of x is sine of x, so that negative it just stays out front. And then we would evaluate this, upper limit minus lower limit. Before I did that in this case, I noticed they were both negatives, so I put the negative out front so that I didn't have to deal with it. That's optional, but I like to keep the negatives separated if possible. Put in my upper limit, lower limit, and then you would have to know your unit circle values to get the various square root of 2 over 2's and their signs correct. And what we end up is negative square root of 2 over 2 plus negative square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. So we've got four negative square root of 2 over 2's. You can get a common denominator which is already there. Ultimately it ends up being negative 4 square root of 2 over 2. The negative out front makes it positive and when you simplify you get 2 square root of 2. If you were to do this in your calculator, simple setup, 
but the approximation would come out to 2.828.